Morales on radar calibration. So since you ask a very uh, tricky question to Lucas, it's going to be discounted from your presentation okay. time. All right, so I have very few slides. So I had to do the next job, so I had to show some of the, the calibration issues. And it's nice to see that uh, Lucas did it like a, a presentation that allows me to, to skip some of the Okay, so uh, what I'll try to do here is just uh, on, a, on a way that since we are using the polar measurements as one of our uh, rain uh, products, so it's important to know whether this mobile radar is working properly or not. So, and as you saw before, attenuation is a real problem. But besides that, uh, Luca gave a very nice idea that uh, we had to take into account some of the particularities of the radar. And as we have a mobile radar, it runs uh, over the places and so on. So the calibration, the power, and everything else needs to be always checked. So and sometimes when we don't have all the radio engineers with us, so it's very reliable when you have it. But when you don't have it, so we always have to check, check it out, those kind of things. And besides that, so we had to test also how is the attenuation correction schemes working because we are using Gematronic product as our level one product. So we have to check whether it's right or not because if you don't correct for any radio calibration if they exist, all the calibration or the correction scheme is going to be affected. So we had to, to look at that. So the objectives of this presentation would be very short, so I'll show you several uh, plots with some of the numbers that we have pulled up. So of course it's not the 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 less numbers because we still have to make some filtering to to improve those things. So the idea is to check the radio calibration that we are talking about level zero. That's the radio reflectivity factor as we measure, and then you have the attenuation scheme that's a level one. So it's based on on PDP. So that's the algorithm that we are using to estimate laid on rain for rate. So anything that you are talking about rain is going to depend on the the calibrations or correction schemes that you're using. So for doing that, so what I'll do is that I'll present two approaches that we have done in the past. One that use combining measurements with the train precipitation radar, that's the training comparison, and another one would be with TSD measurements when we have RHIs over some of the super sites. So we have the the disarmament data. So as you saw it like Isabel presented, so we have a lot of data issues that has to be taken into account as well during these intercomparisons. For Trim PR, so we are using uh, our old uh, technique that was developed by my former advisor and colleague, Anang in 2001, when we, we combined a Trim PR, 225 uh, radar reflective factor to calibrate the next red and some of the LBA radars and, uh, and some of the Trim field campaigns as well. And the idea is to use the KU against S bands or uh, X or C bands to compare. So, but to avoid any frequency difference, we concentrate only in the regime that we believe that everybody's seeing the same thing. That means ice. So that's the idea that we are going to look at for everything between seven kilometers and 15 kilometers. We use caps with two kilometers depth. So every one kilometer. So, and then we compare with the, try to have the same footprint as we have with uh, Trim PR, that's almost 4.5 by 5 by 5 kilometers. So we make a common grid on a three dimension because Trim PR sees a snapshot that's with 250 meters resolution. So the idea is to combine the higher resolution on a snapshot with the higher resolution you have with, on the radar on the temporal one. So we had to combine both uh, volumes as seen. So, and then what we do is that we constrain also the time sampling or the time difference between the train overpass and the measurements we have with the radar because we have a different strategy that has different time evolution. So in that way, so we only constrain up to two to three minutes time difference so to allow to have the same type of system. And a very more important thing, we had to guarantee that you don't have deep combustion along this length path of the radar, so we only pick spot from rain. 
So it's a very light range so that any correction would be suppressed in principle. So, and also, since we have rain attenuation problems, so we don't go beyond 60 kilometers intercomparison. So we restrict ourselves up to 60 kilometers. So I will show you the three campaigns we had. So pretty much what happens is that we, we make like the expo capis with three capis in the same common grid, and then we begin to search for the time difference, and then we begin to look. with the reflective uh, PDFs. And then when we computed the bias uh, offset between both, so we see that it's around like 1.8, 1.9 dB above, especially because you have, uh, what is the laser point? So, especially, especially because we have this green TP over here. So as we go with the correction scheme, so we are assuming that uh, the software is correcting for the ZDR and so on, as we saw in the beginning of the, the first day. So what happened is we do see here is that after correcting, so there is a slight shift of the vertebrate factor as observed by Expo towards higher values, and then the bias gets up to 2.7. So there is an increase of that because it's correcting for rain attenuation. So that's expected, so that has to increase. So when you go for intercomparisons like looking for the dispersion diagrams, the difference between both laters, as assuming that the, the trim PR is merging the truth, so we do see here is that as you increase the radar reflectivity, the bias increases. So there is something that we have to inspect over that. So we would expect to be something like a more towards a, a, a specific value, but not increasing with the weather reflectivity. As we go for level one, it shifts a little bit higher as we expected. Okay, so let's go for Fortaleza. That's a different environment, different clouds that would expect more warm clouds. But of course, we did measure some deep convection there and some strut form ones. So when we go there, so, and then we have the level zero, it's more, spread so you can see two different PDFs, especially for the expo. So you have like a lower values. We are sampling very small systems. And then when you go for the bias offset, we see now that's a negative bias made in almost like dB. So when you correct it as expected, it increased the Z values and then shifts it around like 2 dB. So an increase, so and then goes through minus 1.4, okay? So now let's go to the dispersion. We have the same thing. So we have to inspect what's causing this dependence with a radio reflectivity as well as for z level zero and level one. So when we go to the value campaign, the GLM, so I'm just considering November and December. I didn't go to, through January until March as we expanded the, the campaign over there, but we had a lot of measurements over there. So and then the measurements get tight now. So the, the, the distributions are pretty much close between the, the polar metro radar and the train PR. And then the bias distribution, or the bias, as we found it, is 1.9. As we correct it for attenuation, we increase another 2 dB. It goes for 3.9. So there is an overestimation of the, the radar measurements of Expo. The same thing as we see here, So, but now we do see here more points like uh, under this uh, dependence of Z. And the same thing as level one. Okay, so when we did a summary of that, so what happens is that for the lane and, and valley, so we had we, with uh, level zeros, 1.9, 1.8, that would expect to be plus and minus 1.5. That would be the difference between X band and, and KU band, at specifically between 15 and 35 dBZ. So when we correct it, so there is a, almost like an increase of one or two dB, but when we look at for Fortaleza, we have negative. So we had to see is whether an effect of a strong systems that we are observing there or not. So that's one thing that we had to do it. And here's just the column of number of uh, match at grid points we had it between train and, and the radar. Okay, the next one is going to be using like the 
The drop size distributions as measured by these parameters would be the, the jaws and parcel. And with the parcels, what we did is that we collected the rain gates and then we constrained it. So we had to make sure that the difference between rain gates and the parameter on rain was less than 10%. It was less than 10% was a valid count or measure. So in a way that to avoid some splashings and all those kind of things. Plus, we only consider also rainfall rates above 0 0.1 millimeter. That's a minimum detectable uh, rainfall rate that would expect it for the drumeter and the radar as well. And what happened is that the gate resolution of all the, 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 the arch eyes and the volume scans are 150 meters. So in order to avoid any problem, so what we did is that centered over the super site, we pick the, the gates after and before, and then we average with the one that's located over the site. So we make an average. And then I will show here is, is uh, mean values of a radar reflectivity of the arch eyes over here, between zero and 500 meters, zero and one kilometer, and zero and two kilometers. For this presentation, only the two kilometers I'll be presented. So the idea is because the rain's precipitating and it might evaporate in the, in, the, in the meantime. So you had to find what would be the time lag as you observe it. And of course, we have all these ground clusters and so on. So you cannot trust completely everything that's above a certain height. So here is a different perspective now. So on the left panel, you have the Z as measured by the polarimetric radio, the expo, and the Z in the abscesses with the zonometer data. This is for Fortaleza level zero in the left panel and level one in the right panel, okay? In the bottom panel, we have the, the PDFs distributions. In white, what would we see in the, the Z distribution of the zonometer? Red, the level zero, and yellow or orange. So I confused it was two in the morning. So with some beers, Heineken, not Brahma. But, and then we have the cumulative distribution. So it's clear here that now when we look at for the rain at the ground with the disrometer, there is an underestimation of the, of the Z as observed by the radar, okay? This one's consistent what we found it with the trim PR. So after it corrects with level one, so it becomes a, like a blurry. So it doesn't make any sense that you'd see some bias over here. So it's a little bit like a general. So we don't know exactly what's going on. When you go to Berlin, we do see here that's a little bit underestimating. So it's below the, the curve. But then when you correct it, the points appear. So they are eliminated by the correction. I don't know what happened. So that's uh, something that we had to check it out. So when we look at the PDF, it's very clear that in this case, so we have this underestimation. So, and the DSD for a valley is the same thing here. So it keeps underestimating the precipitation as we see it from the disrometer at the ground. But when you correct it for the level one, so then some of the points get shifted to higher values, but still you don't see this bias offset. So we don't know exactly what's going on. Probably it's a nonlinear problem because of the, the scheme that's correcting the, the Z factor. So, in principle, we had to pay attention in those things. So, in summary, what we did find it, uh, the bias for Fortaleza in beginning, so was 11 dB, negative. Berlin, 5 dB. And for and Valley, around like minus 13 dB. After you correct it, that's more sensitive now as compared to the train because train we are looking at seven kilometers and higher. Here we are looking at ground. So now the difference is around like a, an increase almost like 5 dB instead of 2 that we had before. So now after the level 1, so we have a, an underestimation of 6.5 dB up to 8 dB in valley. Okay? So here is the number of minutes that we, we have observed uh, and matched data sets. So in conclusions, as I said, it would be a very short presentation because that's the dirty work. So, uh, so don't get scared that you're using the radar data because we can correct all these things. So, but we had to see it what's going on. So on the training comparisons, we we'll expect 1.5 dB difference due to the frequency difference, okay? So we did find some difference with some bias that needs to be investigated further and corrected because once you're really assured that this is a bias, 
and can be it because the power, the transmitter power is not recorded on the file. So we had to know exactly what's the power. The gain of the antenna, we don't know if it changed or not. So we had to take into account those kind of things. So although the radar does a lot of stuff, but we had to look at it. So that's one thing that we has to be done because anything else you do it, so depends on the right measurements. So level one, what we see from the trim PR, adds around like two dBZ, implying an excessive of overestimation. So it's, it's going up. So this is the summary I saw before. When you go for the disrometer though, we did find some underestimation. So because we are going a little bit down. So one thing that we had to take care of is, is the question scheme working fine? And when I'm looking for the DSD measuring, that's one important thing. Most of our sites were between 10 and 20 kilometers. So most probably, it was raining over the site. That means that the radon could be wet. And that would be one of the explanations that we did see this very low underestimation, okay? So we found it that correcting, so it solves some of the problems. But still, it remains a question mark that, is it everything that's accountable or not? So as a final remark, so what we were proposing is because we have very few groups so we needed more people to work with. So the idea is to, we need to define a task force to inspect this bias difference. And attenuation correction scheme. So we had to go there and check it out those things because rainfall rates depends on this correction. So probably correct it for the trim bias and then apply the correction scheme again. So try to check. So we are making an effort now to make a, a correction scheme, the attenuation for the, Z, the PDP correction on a C code, so in a way that accelerate the, the reprocessing. And we need to play with the radar to check radar wetting to evaluate another correction scheme. So we had to play a little bit with the radar before we go to any field campaign or afterwards, so to know exactly what it is. Because radar, uh, as Luca was showing, has a lot of problems, but my, my own opinion is alive because it changes. So it mutates every time you go to a different place. So you had to know better the radar to know what you had to do it. So, and then we need to play with the radar parameters. Example, number of samples per ray. So does it make an impact or not? The gate resolution, does it make an impact or not? So do we gain quality or not? So we still keep it with the, the ones and so on. So we had to know a little bit better the system to define the better strategies of the volume. Okay, so that's uh, uh, what I was Leave it for comments and later on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Uh